Welcome back to Learn As You Explore for another MBAR2 tutorial. In the last video, we built and tested a simple line following program for the MBAR2. We watched it follow the line, making adjustments as needed. While that worked, there's a way to make it even better. In this video, we'll take our line follower to the next level using a concept from control theory. Control theory is a powerful field rooted in mathematics and physics and it plays a key role in robotics. Today, we'll see how it can help our MBOT2 move smoother and more accurately when following a line. Before we dive in, here's a quick way to support my work. If you're planning to get an MBOT2, you can use my Amazon affiliate link in the description. It won't cost you extra, but as an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Or if you just want to say thanks, there's a buy me a coffee link down in the description too. All right, let's jump in. In our previous video, we used the if-then-else logic for line following. The quad RGB sensor detects if the line is under the left or the right sensors. If the right side detects the line but not the left, then the robot arcs right. If the left side detects the line but not the right, then the robot arcs left. If both sides detect the line, then the robot goes straight. Our simple line follower works, but it has three big problems that we can fix. First is late correction. The robot corrects its path too late. The logic only commands a turn when both sensors on one side lose the line. Second, there's the problem of overcorrection. The robot can only turn at a fixed angle, like a car with just three steering options, straight, left, or right. This causes zigzag motion and unstable tracking. Third is the complexity of the code. The program has multiple nested if-then-else blocks, making it harder to read and debug. One solution that addresses these three problems is proportional control. Instead of fixed turns, proportional control adjusts the motor speeds based on how far off the robot is from the line. Using proportional control, corrections happen earlier and more smoothly. This helps prevent the problem of late correction. The turn amount is proportional to how far off the robot is from the line. This helps address the problem of overcorrection. And finally, the code becomes cleaner with no nested if-then-else blocks, reducing the complexity of the code. Overall, this results in better line tracking and smoother movement. So let's dive into exploring proportional control a bit more. For an analogy, think of driving a car. If you drift slightly off the road, you gently turn the wheel. But if you are way off, you turn the wheel more sharply to correct your path. That's exactly how proportional control works. It adjusts the correction based on how far off you are. So what do we need to implement proportional control? First, we need an error signal. In our case, this is called deviation, a number that tells us how far off the robot is from the center of the line. The quad RGB sensor provides this automatically in M block using the deviation block. Second, we need a stronger correction for larger deviation and a weaker correction for smaller deviation. If the robot is slightly off, it corrects it gently. If it's far off, it makes a stronger turn. And to achieve this correction proportional to the amount of deviation, we will need a couple of equations that dictate how much power is to be sent to each of the left and right motors. The error signal is given to us directly by the M block using the quad RGB sensor's deviation block. However, the equations is something that we need to explore. Now let's break down the equation for proportional control. Our goal is to adjust the motor speeds based on how far the robot is from the center of the line. Let's first define three variables. First is base power. This is the default speed when the robot is centered and driving straight. Second is Kp. This is called the proportional gain, which is a correction factor. Larger values of Kp mean stronger corrections. Third is deviation. This is provided by the quad RGB sensor and ranges from minus 100 to plus 100 
and is a measure of how far off the robot is from the center of the line. Now let's look into what the values reported by deviation means. A large positive value for deviation close to plus 100 means that the line is far left of the robot. A small positive value, close to zero but still positive, means that the line is slightly left of the robot. A deviation value of zero means that the line is centered. A small negative value, close to zero but still negative, means that the line is slightly to the right of the robot. And finally, a large negative value, close to minus 100, means that the line is far right of the robot. Now that you know what the deviation values mean, let's look at the equations. These are the equations. Computing the left and right motor's power is done by taking the base power and adjusting it by a factor that is proportional to the deviation from the center of the line. To understand these equations better, let's walk through five examples. Let's keep our formula on top for reference. We will then make a couple of assumptions. We will assume that the base power is at 30% and Kp, which is our proportional gain, is set to 0.3. You can play around with these numbers if you want. Increasing the base power will increase the overall speed of the robot. Increasing Kp will increase the strength of the corrections, so the robot will more aggressively correct for higher values of Kp. So let's look at the first example where the deviation value is plus 100. The left and right power calculations are as follows and they result in the values of left power being 0 and right power being 60. As you can imagine, this means that the robot is going to make a sharp left turn. And this makes sense because with a deviation value of plus 100, it means that the line is to the left of the robot, and in order to perform a correction, the robot needs to turn sharp left to get back on track. For the second example, we will assume a small positive deviation value of plus 30. The left and right power calculations look as follows, and they result in values of 21 and 39. As you can see, they are not very far off from the base power of 30. The left power is slightly lower and the right power is slightly higher, indicating a gentle left turn. This also makes sense because with a small positive deviation value, it means that the robot is slightly left of the line and a gentle left turn would be sufficient to bring the robot back in alignment. For the third example, we will take a zero deviation value, which means the line is perfectly centered. The left power and right power calculations are as shown here, and they result in the left power and right power both being 30. So with equal power sent to both wheels, this means that the robot drives straight, as expected when the line is centered. Next, we'll look at a small negative deviation case we will assume a small negative deviation value of negative 30. The left and right power calculations are shown and they result in the left power being 39 and the right power being 21. As you can see, this corresponds to a gentle right turn, which makes sense because with a small negative value for deviation, the line is slightly right of the robot and performing a gentle right turn will bring the robot back in alignment. Finally, let's take the case of a large negative value of minus 100. The left and right power calculations are shown and they result in the left power being 60 and the right power being zero. This indicates a sharp right turn, which makes sense because the line is far right of the robot and we need to correct stronger in order to get back on track. Finally, there's one small modification that needs to be done to the equations. This is to account for the fact that the right motor actually drives backward when given a positive power and drives forward when given a negative power. This is opposite to the left motor's direction and is because of the way that the motors are mounted opposite to each other on the chassis. In order to account for this, we will multiply the right motor power by a negative one and that inverts the direction. All right. Great job so far, we have our final equations. Now that you understand how proportional control works, let's build the program in mBlock. Let's first open the mBlock web editor, go to ide.mblock.cc. Name the program, I'm going to call it advanced line follower, so we can save it. 
add the embot2 robot, use the when button be pressed block as the start event, use a repeat until block with button A pressed to stop the program, Now let's create some variables. We're going to create the five variables, base power, KP, deviation, left power, and right power as seen in our equations. This is something new, so I'll walk you through this step by step. So go to the variables block category. And the first thing you want to do is select make a variable. Give your variable a name. The first one we will create is called base underscore power. Select OK and we can make all the other variables in a similar way. So we're gonna make KP, deviation, left power, and right power variables. Great, so now that we have our variables, let's start by setting the base power and KP according to our assumptions that we had. Since the base power and KP are fixed and don't change during the program, we would set them outside the repeat until loop. So head to the variables block, use the set variable block, and you wanna set the base power to 30. Similarly, we will set KP as well using the same block, change the variable to KP and set it to 0.3. Next, inside the loop, we will set deviation using the quad RGB sensors deviation block. This is the quad RGB sensors deviation block that gives us the deviation from minus 100 to plus 100 as we saw in the presentation. So let's drag this over to the set deviation block. Now we are at a point where we can define left power and right power from the equations. If we look at the equations, we see that KP times deviation is common between both left power and right power. So let's do that first. Go to the operators block, get the multiplication block, for the first operand, we need KP, and for the second operand, we need deviation. Both of those are variables that we have defined. So we can go to the variables block, drag in KP, and then drag in deviation. Since we need two of these blocks, one for left power and one for right power, we can duplicate this by right-clicking and then select duplicate. For the left power, we need base power minus this block, KP times deviation. So let's go to the operators, drag in the subtraction block. And for the first operand, we need base power, which is one of the variables that we've defined. So drag this over as the first operand and use this as the second operand. Great, so now we're ready to set the left power. In order to do that, once again, go to the variables block, use the set variable block, change this to left power and use this block as the value for left power. For the right power, we have base power plus KP times deviation. We have KP times deviation already, so go to the operators block and get the addition block. And we'll use the base power variable from the variables block as the first operand and KP times deviation as the second operand. Finally, we need to multiply this value by negative one. So we'll go to the operators block to get another multiplication block. The first operand is gonna be negative one and the second operand is gonna be this block. Finally, we set the right power by using the set variable block and changing this to right power and using this as its value. All right, so far we've defined all our variables, but we're not really commanding the motors to do anything at this point. So let's work on that. We will go to the mbot 2 chassis category and use the encoder motor power block to set the left and right motor powers. EM1 corresponds to the left power so we need to replace this 50% with the left power variable. EM2 corresponds to the right motor power. So we have to replace the 50% here with right power. Finally, we will add a stop encoder motor all block after the loop to stop the robot before the program ends. All right, let's save our program and we're done. Notice how simple the program has become compared to the if-then-else structure that we had previously. Now let's upload this program to our robot and test it out on our mbot2. Make sure that the robot is powered on and is connected to your computer with the USB cable. 
click on upload and then click on serial, select the USB serial device and click connect. Great, your robot is now connected. Click on upload code, wait for the upload to complete and great, your code has now been uploaded. You can now unplug the USB cable from the robot. Great, let's head on over to the robot and see our program in action. Let's start the robot on the line. Press button B to start the program. Watch how the robot makes smaller, more frequent corrections for smoother motion. The line following performance is a lot better than the jerky motion that we got with the simple line follower program in our previous video. We can now stop our program. I want to show you another scenario where the simple line follower program completely fails but the advanced line follower does a great job. Let's start with the simple line follower program. Let's see what the simple line follower does when you start the program from this position where the robot is off the line but perpendicular to it. As we can see, the simple line follower fails to start tracking the line and goes completely off from the sheet. This is because it is not able to command a stronger correction for a larger deviation. So we will call that a fail. Let's now test the same case with the advanced line follower. When the program is started, we see a much stronger correction being applied and the robot does a great job of starting and continuing to track the line. Great job. You just implemented your first control theory concept. Notice how much simpler the program is and how much smoother the robot's motion is. Don't forget to show off your new proportional control line follower to friends and family. They'll be impressed. If you found value in this video, hit the like button and subscribe to learn as you explore for more MBOT2 tutorials. Here are some of my other videos that you may find helpful. Happy programming, and I'll see you in the next one.